Hi, I'm Fred from CodeStudent.net. Welcome to the third part of the Java Text RPG tutorial series. The last episode was all about creating a foundation for different characters and starting our game. This part will be focused on creating the main game loop for our Java Text RPG. Additionally, we'll create the main menu and also write a method that prints out a character info with all the interesting stats and values of our player. Furthermore, we are going to implement the storyline. If you missed the second part, watch it now. Also make sure to check out our blog on codestudent.net and also visit our Instagram and Twitter profiles. So, first of all, let us delete the two slashes in front of the game loop function call inside our start game method. We don't need to let it be a comment as we are going to create the main game loop now. Our main game loop will call the same methods all over again as long as our game is running. To let us control if the game is running, create a public static boolean named isRunning at the top of the game logic class. Inside the start game method, assign is running to true before calling the main game loop. Let's create a method inside our game logic class. We call it game loop. It's of type void as it doesn't return anything and also takes no parameters. The method itself is very simple. It only consists of one while loop. The loop continues as long as isRunning is equal to true. Inside this loop, we want to call a method that prints out our main game menu. We are going to create this after that. Then, we use the readInt method to get the user's input and react accordingly. If our player enters 1, we want to call a method that lets the player continue on his or her journey. We will create this method in a second, so we won't get any compiling errors, but we won't add functionality to it in this part. If the player chooses option 2, the game will print out the character info. If the player's input is equal to 3, we set is running to false and the game will terminate. Your whole method should now look something like this. So let's quickly create a method that lets the player continue on the journey. As I mentioned before, we will only declare this method in this part of the tutorial, but we won't give it any functionality. I call the method continue journey. It should obviously be inside the game logic class and therefore also be static. Also, it won't return a value, so it's of type void. The menu will be fairly simple. First, let's clear out the console. Then, we'll add a heading and prompt the player to choose one of three options. The player can continue on the journey, take a look at the character information, or exit the game. The print menu method should look like this. If the player chose option number 2 in the menu, we want to give the player a nice and quick overview of all the important stuff. To do this, create a static method inside the game logic class without a return type. Inside there, Clear out the console and print a heading. After the heading, we want to print out the player's name and current hit points. The next important thing is the player's XP value. Last but not least, we want to print the player's traits to the console if there are any in each skill path. Use the anything to continue method to let the game pause until the player wants it to continue. Feel free to add separators in between all the information. The whole method should look similar to this. We are creating a Java text RPG. What do all RPGs have in common? You're right, a story. Without a story, a role-playing game wouldn't make much sense. Therefore, let's create a new class for our story. Feel free to create your own storyline, but to give you some guidance, I will provide you with mine as well in the description. The method inside the class will all be static, so we won't have to initialize an instance of this class inside our game logic class to access the story methods. My story consists of an intro, an ending, and four acts, which all have their own intro and outro. I created a method for all of these parts of the story. Inside each method, I cleared out the console and printed a heading to give the player a feeling for where he or she is right now. After that, the story gets printed and the anything to continue method from the game logic class gets called. My story class looks like this. But I strongly encourage you to create your own story, but it's fine to use mine for learning purposes. To implement the first parts of the story, go inside the start game method again. Call the method that prints the story's intro before creating the player object. After the character got created, call the method that shows the intro of the first act. In the next parts, we will implement the rest of the story inside a method that checks in which act the player is currently in. But for now, we only want to call the first two story elements. Our story takes part at different locations. To let the player know where he or she currently is, we will create an array of type string that stores our locations. We also want to add integer variables that store the location we are currently at and the act our story is in. Add those at the top of the game logic clause. 
Also, don't forget to change the heading of the menu to the current location. In this short third part of the Java Text RPG series, we implemented the main game loop that is like the core engine of our game. We also created a main game menu and a method that prints out all the important player stats. Additionally, we wrote the storyline for our game and implemented the first parts of it. If you have any questions about today's tutorial, just ask us in the comments, on Twitter or Instagram, or simply send us an email. Also make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel to not miss the next part of this awesome tutorial series. And please, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us improving. I'm Fred from CodeStudent.net. I hope you enjoyed this part of the Java Text RPG tutorial series. Stay motivated learning how to code and have a nice day.